why doesn't anyone talk to circles? Because there's no point. Yes, that's going to be the tone of this lesson. OK, let's get started. So we're going to be carrying on looking at fractions and we're going to be looking at percentages and decimals and all of those and how they link together. And this is the final lesson today, looking at how we convert from one to the other. We're moving on to the most complex now, so you're going to need to bear with me today. So we're going to start, as we always do, with identifying the imposters. So have a look on the board and pause the video now. OK, you're with me. So let's start, as we always do, at the top. Now it says here one quarter of 360. OK, so if I've got one quarter of 360, I've got my 360. And it wants me. Bear with me while I try and make this look the same size. It wants me to find one quarter. Well, 360 would be all four of these, but I only want to work out one. So I divide it by four to work out what each one of these would be. Well, 360 divided by four, I'm not sure, but I do know what 36 divided by four is. 36 divided by four is nine. So 360 divided by four is going to be 90. So each of these here, I'm really sorry, I can't do a nine upside down. Each of these is going to be 90. Now, we wanted one quarter, so we only need one of these. So one quarter of 360 is 90. Oh, White's our first imposter. Let's move on to the next. Yellow, 2.34 times 1,000 is 2,340. Yes, it is. Blue. 45.22 add 3.832. OK, well, we're going to have to lay that one out. So I'm going to start with my 45.22. Now, it's really important here we line up the digits, because if we line them up wrong, we're going to get this wrong. The easiest way to do that is to line up the decimal points, because the decimal points are always in the same place. Now. The three is on the left of the decimal point, so I'm going to put that there underneath the five. It's worth, it's in the ones column, so it needs to go there. And then 832 is going to go here. So 83, I'm double checking, two. Now we've got two problems here. We've got two spaces where we don't have a number, and that might cause us confusion later on. So we're going to invent a placeholder to put there and we can do that. That's absolutely fine. And we could put a placeholder here if we wanted to. We don't need to, but we could do. Now, adding them together. So that's fine. Start here. So we're going to do two add zero or two add nothing, which is going to be two. Two add three is five. 2 add 8 is 10, so we put 0, carry the 1. 1 add 5 is 6, add 3 is 9. And 4 add nothing is 4. 49.052, so we are correct on that one. Next one says 3 times 5 times 2 is 30. Doesn't matter what order we do this in. So we'll do 3 times 5, which is 15, times 2 is 30. Next one, 40,400 take away 500. Yes, it is, 39,900. You could do that by column subtraction, that's absolutely fine. Or you could take away 400, which goes to 40,000, and then take away another 100, which is 39,900. This one up here, 4 fifteenths take away 2 over 30. So 4 fifteenths take away 2 over 30. When we are adding or subtracting fractions, the denominators, as we know, have to be the same. They're not at the moment, so we need to change one of them. Luckily, 15 goes into 30. 
So we only have to change one of them. So I'm going to take that 15 and we're going to make it so it's over 30. How do we get from 15 to 30? We times it by 2. What we do to the bottom, we do to the top. So 4 would become 8. We can then do 8 take away 2, which is going to be 6 over 30, which is what they've got up there. 6 over 30 would cancel down to 3 over 10. So that's absolutely fine. Next one, 564 take away 9. Yep, that looks good to me. All right, brown, 776 divided by 8. So I'm going to have to do this bus stop because I don't know that one. So 8 into 776. 8 doesn't go into 7. So we carry it. 8 into 77. Well, 8 times 10 would be 80, but that's too high. So 8 times 9 is 72. So it's going to have to be that. Oh, they keep making me do nines upside down today. Now, 8 times 9 is 72, but I wanted 77, so we've got 5 left over. We put the 5 here. 8 into 56 goes 7 times. So my answer is 97. Lovely. OK, pink. 8 take away 2.75. Again, we need to line these up. Now, the easiest way to do that is to line up the whole numbers. 8 and 2 are the whole numbers. So we've got 8 take away 2.75. Like so. And again, we have gaps. What do we do with gaps? We invent placeholders. Now we've got 8.00 take away 2.75. You don't have to do it this way. If you know it mentally, that's absolutely fine. I'm just showing you a way that would work if you don't know how to do it mentally. So we can't do zero take away five. So we're going to have to borrow all the way from over here. So we borrow from the eight, make that seven. That then becomes 10. Borrow from the 10. That becomes 9. This now becomes 10. 10 take away 5 is going to be 5. 9 take away 7 is 2. And 7 take away 2 is 5. 5.25. 5. Pink's the imposter. Final one then. Red, one third times a fifth is one over 15 because we just times them together. One times one, numerators would be one. Three times five would be 15. So the answer is one over 15. OK, moving into today's lesson then. So same as normal. We have four different representations here. Which one doesn't belong? Pause the video now. OK, so let's have a look. So this one here, we've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 54 out of 100. Now we know that anything over 100, the numerator is the percentage and the decimal. So 54 over 100 is 54%, which is 0 0.54. They are all equal to each other. Well, we've got 54%, so these two are the same. This one here, 27 over 50. Well, we can't work that out at the moment because it's over 50. And by now we know that we need to turn it into something over 100 because that's much easier to work with. From 50 to 100, we double it. So we double 27. Double 27 is 54. 54 over 100, we know is 54%. So this one, this one, and this one are the same. 0 0.53, however, would be what as a percentage? 
would be 53%, so that is the odd one out. Okay, what we know already from this week, we know that to easily convert a fraction, we need to make it so it has a denominator of 10 or 100. If it has a different denominator, it's tricky. There are some fractions, though, that we just need to know what they are. Because either it's not possible to turn it over into 10 or 100, or it's not worth doing. It's easier to just remember it. Now, two of those are half and a quarter. Now, hopefully we know that half is the same as 50% or 0 0.5. And that's one of the ones you need to know. So if you need to, make a note of it. OK, you just need to know that. Now we've got a quarter. Now a quarter, we need to know, is 25%. And 25% is the same as 0 0.25. So we have a quarter, 25%, 0 0.25, like so. OK, those are the ones we know so far. Today, we're going to need to know what an eighth is. Now, let's have a look at this, because this might help us. Chen says, if half is equivalent to 50% or 0 0.5, and a quarter is equivalent to 25% or 0 0.25, then an eighth is equivalent to 12.5%. Is he correct? Well, yes he is. Because when we go from half to a quarter, the 50 halves to 25. When we go from a quarter to an eighth, it's going to halve again. So 25 would halve to become 12.5%. So you need to know that one eighth is equal to 12.5% or 0 0.125. I would suggest you pause and make a note of that now because you're going to need that for the lesson. So pause the video, make a note of it. Okay, now. Oh, by the way, Which king would really love this lesson? Henry VIII. Get it? Because an eighth is one over... Yeah, OK. Moving on. Here we are. Half becomes a quarter, becomes an eighth. It's getting half smaller each time. OK, so the first one we've just done. An eighth is the same as 0 0.125. If one eighth is 0.125 or 12.5%, how would we work out four eighths? So one eighth is equal to 12.5%. It's asking us for four eighths. Two ways you could do this. The first way is we can make that 1 into a 4 by timesing it by 4. To get from 1 eighth to 4 eighths, we times by 4. What we do here, we need to do here. So you can times 12 and a half by 4. We times by 4 here, so we times by 4 here. 12 and a half times 4. Well, times the 10, so that'd be 40, 48, and then we times that, which is 2, so that'd be 50%. Now, you may be looking at that and thinking, hold on, it's 50%. Was there not an easy way of doing it? 
And yes, because four eighths is equivalent to a half. Because if you double four, you get eight, which means four is half of eight. If we know this is the same as a half, we know it's 50 percent because we looked at that before. The next one then is five eighths. Now, we just did four eighths. I want five eighths. How many more is that? One more eighth. So what we can do is we could just add these two together because one eighth add four eighths is five. Yep, that worked. Five eighths. If we add these two together, we're also going to get five eighths. So 50 add 12 is going to be 62. Point five percent. Like so. And once you've got the percentage, we know the decimal is really easy. OK, can you have a go, please, at working out two eighths for me, please? So you know what one eighth is because you wrote that down a minute ago. How are you going to get to two eighths? So to get to two eighths, we would double it. We would double the twelve and a half percent, which would be twenty five percent or zero point two five. Three eighths. Have a go. Add the two eighths and the one eighth together. Should have got thirty seven point five percent. Six eighths. We could double that three eighths if we wanted to, because double three is six. And that would be seventy five percent. Eight eighths is just one because it's a whole. Ah, we're not going to worry about it too much. So, for our first activity today, I'm going to show you here, let's just move on. For our first activity today, what you need to do is you've got three different representations, a fraction, a percentage and a decimal. And it's asking you to compare all three. Yesterday you just compared two, today you're going to compare three. So the first job is you're going to compare these two. Now, you can't compare until you've converted them. They need to be converted so that they're the same, either a fraction, decimal, percentage, whatever you want to do. Now, we've got six eighths, which is 75 percent. Now, you may have made a note earlier that six eighths was 75 percent. So we've got six eighths, which is 75 percent. And then this one is 75 percent. Therefore, they're the same. 0 0.8 would be equal to 80%. Because remember, it's not 8% because we could put a 0 here. That's an awful 0, but you get the point. 80%. So 80% is bigger than 75%. So the crocodile, I nearly drew on my TV there, that wouldn't be very good. The crocodile eats the bigger number, so it would point towards 80%. OK, can you have a go at the next two then, please? Convert them and then put either equals or crocodiles as to which one is the biggest or whether they're the same. Off you go. OK, and you're back with me. So let's have a look and see how you got on. There we are. So seven eighths is bigger than 85.5%, but it's smaller than 0 0.87. 0 0.13 is bigger than an eighth, which is bigger than 12%. OK. All right, then activity two. Suddenly it looks complex because it's got words. Doesn't matter. First thing we're going to do is get rid of the stuff we don't care about. Four friends don't care. Share a cake, really don't care. Jamal eats three-eighths of the cake. Yep, I like that. Well, the number's useful anyway. Where's my mouse gone? There it is. So, three-eighths, that's important. 
That's a very bad circle. Ruth eats 20%. That's important. Ahmed eats 0.25 of the cake. And Yasmin eats 17.5% of the cake. So we've got the four things that matter. This is a maths lesson, so chances are it's the numbers that matter. OK, the first part of the question. Write each person's amount as a fraction, decimal and percentage. So what's that asking me to do? Well, Jamal, we already know, 838. So J equals 3 eighths. I've got my fraction. I'm going to set myself up a little table that looks something like this. Fraction, decimal, percentage. I've got the fraction, so I'm going to work out what it would be as a decimal and what it would be as a percentage. Then I'm going to do the same for Ruth. Now Ruth, we've got the percentage, so I'm going to put the percentage down, like so, and work out the decimal and the fraction. And I'm going to do that for all four people. So just do part A for me. Pause the video and have a go at that. OK. I'm hoping this will do one part at a time. It did. Lovely. Now, those are the answers for part A. Have a look, see how you got on. OK, so part B is to put the friends in order who ate the most to who ate the least. So you're going to look at these and order them from whoever ate the most cake to whoever ate the least cake. Have a go at that now. OK. So Jamal, then Ahmed, then Ruth, then Yasmin. And finally, how much cake is left is the final question. So they have eaten all of this. They've eaten 37.5% and they've eaten 25% and they've eaten 20% and they've eaten 17.5%. Now, that's what they've eaten. The total cake is 100% because there's a hundred percent of cake. Sounds quite nice. So to work this out, we need to add these up and whatever we get, take away from a hundred. That will give you the cake that is left that no one has eaten yet until I get there. Off you go. Okay. So, there's no cake left over, so I'm going to be very sad. Oh well. Activity three. In a spelling test, Archimedes gets a score of 65%. Okay, word problems. Again, here comes the pen. Do I care about spelling test? No. Do I care that his name's Archimedes? No. Score of 65%, yeah, that'll do. Yasmin, don't care. Gets a score, don't care. 24 out of 40, yep, that's useful. And Ruth averages 0 0.625. Okay, I've got my three bits of information that I need. The question is to, <coughs> pardon me, the question is to put their scores in order from lowest to highest. Okay, to be able to order them, they need to be the same. We need to have them as either a fraction, a decimal or a percentage. I'm going to choose percentage because I like working with percentages. I find them easier. You may disagree and that's fine. Now, we know Archimedes got 65%, so that one's done. The next one we need to work out is 24 over 40. I'm not going to give too much away other than... At the moment, the fraction is over 40. That makes it difficult. There are two denominators that are easy to convert into a decimal or a percentage. One of them's 100. Not that one. The other one is 
I'm hoping you're saying 10. Turn it into tenths, work it out as a percentage. Turn that one into a percentage and order them. Best of luck. Pause the video now. Okay, here are your answers. So Yasmin received the lowest score as 24 over 40. It would be six tenths or three fifths, it doesn't really matter. And that is 60%. Ruth has 62.5%. Ahmed has 65%. And that's the order. Okay, only three activities today because those are the activities aimed at everyone. Those of you in my group, my maths group, or those of you that just fancy a challenge, I'm going to upload a challenge couple of questions onto the website for you to have a go at. So you'll find that underneath the link to the video. I will also post it on Seesaw so you can have a go at it on there if you prefer, whichever one you like. I honestly don't mind. OK, for now, it is Friday. So have a lovely weekend and I shall speak to you all again on Monday. Bye.